Ho Chi Minh was hiding in the tiny village of Tan Trao in the mountains northwest of Hanoi when he heard that the Second World War was over. He knew the moment he had worked for all his life had come. In 1941, after 30 years in exile, Ho had sneaked back into Vietnam to lead his revolution. In Russia, the communists had taught him the importance of the revolutionary vanguard, a small group of dedicated revolutionaries who could seize power and mobilize a nation. Ho's revolutionary vanguard was called the League for Vietnamese Independence, or Viet Minh. Its commander was a young history teacher named Vo Win Giap, whose wife and sister-in-law had been guillotined by the French. We met on the hill close to the banyan tree. Under the leadership of President Ho Chi Minh, the Central Committee decided that the time for the general uprising had come. In the evening of the 16th, I gathered the liberation forces under the tree in Tan Trao, and I read the first military orders. At that time, the uprising took place in many parts of Vietnam. Meeting little opposition, Ho's ragtag army raced from its mountain strongholds toward Hanoi. Ho knew the French would not wait long to reclaim their richest colony. He wanted to seize control of the country before the French returned. On August 19th, the Viet Minh entered Hanoi and seized control of the country from the puppet regime installed by the Japanese. We had three battalions. Each one had three companies, so they sort of made up battalions. And one thing I would like to mention is that among our troops at that time, there were three Americans. To fight the Japanese, American OSS commandos had parachuted into Vietnam at the end of the war to give weapons and training to the Viet Minh. Ho had provided the American forces in China with intelligence during the war. When I was with uh, Ho and Zop in the field, uh, I got the impression that they would fight no matter how long it would take to achieve their independence. He told one French person that, that we may lose 10 men to everyone that we, may, that we may kill of you, but in the end, we will prevail. There was, a, there was this fierce rage in the Vietnamese people. Uh, they had been humiliated by having France occupy their country for, for, for 80 years. But Ho felt differently about the United States, owing to the foreign policy of President Franklin Roosevelt. It was quite well known that Franklin Roosevelt uh, was against the French colonization of Indochina. And uh, consequently, Ho felt very kindly disposed towards the Americans because he felt we were against colonialism. He told me privately that he would welcome one million American soldiers but not one French soldier. 26 years after Versailles, Ho Chi Minh again pinned his hopes on the United States. Ho Chi Minh's belief in the help of America had its logic. The issue was not that Ho Chi Minh wanted to establish a communist country. The main issues were independence, freedom, and democracy, not a communist Vietnam. Later, we'd see about communism. On September 2nd, 1945, Ho Chi Minh read Vietnam's Declaration of Independence to a huge crowd in Hanoi. Its opening words came from Thomas Jefferson. When Ho Chi Minh declared his country free and independent, here he was in Ba Dinh Square at a big platform 
and standing there reading a Declaration of Independence. And here was this tremendous crowd below, thousands of people in front of me. He says, do you hear me, countrymen? Do you hear me? And they shouted back, yes, that they heard him. The crowd celebrating independence waved American flags and carried a homemade portrait of the new American president, Harry Truman. Ho wrote to Truman, asking his help in protecting Vietnam's independence from France. Truman never replied. When Truman uh, took over, our whole foreign policy changed. Our sympathies uh, became aligned with the French. My own view is that the people in Washington uh, just did not understand this fierce desire on the part of the Vietnamese people uh, to be independent. In October 1945, the State Department announced that the United States would respect French sovereignty in Indochina. By the end of 1945, the French had returned. Late in 1946, uneasy negotiations between France and Ho's government broke down. Fighting erupted between French forces and the Viet Minh. After 16 months as president of a free Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh fled again into the mountains. His dreams of independence shattered. He would ready the Viet Minh for a guerrilla war that would last 30 years.